My name is Ryan Ackerberg, and I was born in Sioux City, Iowa, July 8th, 1980. And I am a retired window cleaner. I owned a window cleaning company in San Francisco, California, and I suppose you could say photographer now. So I'm just gonna take a, a second. Uh, as soon as you said that, it made me laugh because I remember, you know, growing up, having my mom and dad tell me, oh, I remember JFK or Robert Kennedy, you know. Ugh. And I always kind of thought, the 90s, nothing's going on, you know, the 90s. Uh, <laughs> well, I've now had an economic downturn. I've had war. I remember certain aspects that were really important. And I think because we're still so in it, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I've really taken a, a step back to really think like, but when you ask that question, I know immediately where I was. I was at a I was at a bar with Emily and our good friend Rob, who is an adjunct professor at San Francisco State. And he was like, hey, this COVID-19 thing is gonna be really serious. And I and he was a bit of a you know, he he would catastrophize to a certain extent about certain things. And unfortunately about this, he was spot on. So I don't know, I have, I have vignettes of memories. We had the COVID ship was docked in the Bay of San Francisco. And you would see it. These people were just on there. It was bizarre. What? You know, looking back at the moment, it was just like, well, <laughs> glad I'm not on that boat, you know, odd. But you live by the Bay, you see boats all the time. It was just like, I didn't, you just don't, it's not your life, it doesn't feel like. Because we were still going about our day. I remember the house we were on. It was this huge mansion, and they were just, you, there was just a tension. The news was on, and I'm sitting there listening to our local NPR station in San Francisco, and it was just like, it was almost just like tick, tick, tick. You could just tell it's about to happen. We're going to get shut down, and then boom, tomorrow, effective, midnight tonight. I, I laid off my employees immediately. So my assistant and the one guy that was working for me, and they were able to get unemployment immediately, which was starting to not be able to happen. I was so happy for them. Mm. And, and almost proud of myself that I was able to, in that moment, make that kind of executive decision because it was really hard. It's the first time in 13 years um, the window cleaning company wasn't going. It was scary. And then I got on the horn and on the email and started asking people, if you're on the schedule right now, would you be willing to pay ahead? And they did. And so we were able to stay in business. I didn't get any PPP loans. I didn't do anything. I reached out to my circle of loyal clientele and asked for help, and they pulled through. So while this is all happening, you're uh -huh. learning about the pandemic and things shut down. And the re this and whole time, the there is a house in Sioux City yeah. that, that you own, yep. that you could go to. Yep. So we're paying our rent and a mortgage. We're yeah. not able to rent it out. We're too afraid to do that at that point. It was all so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so we started, you know, eventually the goal would be to move back to Sioux City. Anyway, mm -hmm. the pandemic just fast-tracked all that. We got here the day, 11 p.m., the night of Saturday in the Park. It was wild. Um, to finally be moving back to Sioux City on that day... But it was kind of fun, you know? It was exciting. It took me a long time. I shouldn't say this probably because it's <laughs> I should have gotten my plates a lot sooner. But uh, <laughs> Emily right away. Library card. <laughs> plates <Yeah>. immediately. <laughs> Health insurance. <laughs> me. I strung that. I had those California plates, Mark, forever. <laughs> forever. Until it was like, hey, come on, man. <laughs> you know, you're really kind of running a risk here. I think it had been that next weekend or like a few days later even, the municipal band played in the park right by our house. And it was the first moment I was like, ah, oh, this is good. This is really good. Emily was excited. We had our little to-go mugs with wine in it. And we were, you know, not that we were drinking in the park, but we may have been. And, and we, it was just, like literally next door. It was just a walk down to the park. Support for Facing a Changed World 
an oral history of the COVID-19 pandemic comes from the Margaret Ann Martin Everest Foundation, the Kind World Foundation, Humanities Iowa, the friends of Siouxland Public Media, and listeners like you.